kids, you either love them or hate them. Either way, you cannot deny the fact that they will inherit the world of tomorrow. Because of this importance of their role, we as their overseers wish to protect them and guide them through life and help them make the best decisions they can. However, we do not have as much of control as we think we do. They are exposed to a lot of things on their own time, and that can either come from school, from the stores, or very likely from your very own home. A lot of the channels like YouTube, websites, stuff like that exposes them to a lot of mature themes they, not, they might not be ready for. When I say adult themes, I really, more, I really mean mature, something that a lot of kids shouldn't really have to do and experience through at their time of development. I am a father of three kids. I've been that guy for three years. I've been, I'm the oldest of five other siblings, and I have seen the development and growth of youth many times over. And, I, and then speaking of this, I have seen these messages that have been broadcasted through these media and have seen the impact of the directed audience. My name is Malachi Valencia, and I wanna go through the first thing of going through what they try to attempt to do with the adult themes and maturity. What they try to do with this and, and their impact is they wish to relate the information to those who need to hear it. They try to teach the lessons that come through it and finally try to reach and foster an understanding with the youth they're broadcasting it for. To relate. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, connecting with others is more important than you might think. Social connections can lower anxiety and depression, help us regulate our emotions, lead to higher self-esteem and empathy, and actually improve our immune system. By neglecting our need to connect, we put our own health at risk. What that means is that a lot of people and a lot of kids, especially when they go through something, they don't, a lot of time, they don't have an understanding of how to relate to others. They may be going through a struggle at home that they can't bring forward to their friends and family because they can't understand that maybe you won't understand what I'm going through. Maybe I am alone in this struggle. A lot of time when it comes to pixels on the screen, they feel connected to these characters and seeing what they're going through is like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I'm not alone. This is the first bridge for them gaining an understanding of if they're going through it, maybe my friend at school is going through it. The second is teaching. To get information is interpretation. We all process things differently. We all see values. We all see things, you know, very, our very first lesson here, we're seeing what matters to us and what matters to other people. No one sees something and has the same idea. When it comes to these, especially this picture right here, as with the other one, Arthur, I don't know if I'm the next one in here, Arthur predicts a scene where the teacher is going through cancer. And as we saw from our last presentation, that is a very unfortunate circumstance for people. And all the kids in her class all have different interpretations. Some, one girl is very progressive in the fact that she's gonna get better, everything's gonna be okay. One shuts down, says, you know, why am I gonna bother coming here? She's not gonna be here tomorrow. What if she's not here next week? I love this teacher. I don't want no one replacing her. And it takes another adult to come in and tell them that this is just a process and this is something we're all gonna have to go through. Trying to teach the kids that it's okay to feel the way you feel and interpret your emotions in this way. Then it comes to understanding. Relation and teaching eventually hit understanding. It's our own interpretation and how we feel about it. When it comes to this one in particular, this one, again, all these shows hit these three themes, relating, teaching, understanding. With this one, it talks about emotional struggle with relationships. A lot of the time, it talks about the characters and their, out, and their outputs. And while we can't see relationships physically, this show, in terms of fusions, does. When two characters have a bonding, they become one character. The uglier that relationship that was formed, the uglier this fusion thing was. As you see, they're all humanoid, but a lot of the time when they finally fuse, they're ugly abominations that even struggle to exist. And that comes into the interpretation of that, understanding the messages that are seen from these mess from their direct experiences. 
experiences have a huge play on what they gather from that. And as we see from the lessons portion, we all interpret things differently and understanding that it's okay to just be on your own and see the way you see it. And it's okay for them to see how they see it. With understanding, a close word to say with that is empathy. Erica White, a PhD in psychology, says that empathy does not come naturally, especially to those unfamiliar. We like to think that empathy is something that we always have, and it isn't. A lot of the time, when kids see other kids struggle, they don't actually feel what they're probably saying. They're like, oh, that sucks. But they don't actually understand, oh man, like that must be really heavy for you. Especially in today's society, a lot of people don't want to say anything because they're afraid of being made fun of. And those who naturally feel sympathy probably don't. It's a skill that's actually learned through said experiences, especially with people. What these shows try to do is teach you about what people are going through and what your friends, your family, those you see can experience that you may not. With all that said, it takes a, guide, a guiding hand to really help you see through that. You can gain these experiences and thoughts and lessons in life, but without an actual direction of where you're gonna go with that, it can be really chaotic. And what these shows try to do is show you the process of where you should go from another. Unfortunately, kids don't have that. We've seen a lot of kids in foster homes, no parents, you know, and a lot of that. And they try to help you, guide you to where this is what you want to do with the way you're feeling. Why the pictures are added? This scene in particular, I really liked. If you know, no one knows, that's Rugrats, a really old cartoon. And this scene in particular talks about Chucky's mom. Chucky doesn't have a mom. And unfortunately, on Mother's Day, that's a lot, it's really hard for a lot of people to face. And this scene goes through all three steps where you know it relates to the fact that a lot, some people don't have parents, some people don't have moms. Either you lost them through social issues or you know the life cycle. It, it really makes you feel like, okay, you know, he doesn't have one and he looks pretty okay and he's just a child. It teaches you the fact that even though they're gone, they're not really gone. You know, they're around you spiritually and emotionally. And finally, understanding is when the dad finally says to him, hey, you're old enough and your mom passed away. But it's okay because she never really left. It hits those three points. Along with all these episodes that I've showed you, a lot of them interpret that, these three things in this way. A summarization. And thank you. I hope you guys appreciate the speech.